Are you ready? Okay, yeah, we're ready. I'll start. Ready. Let's call this meeting to order at 1.30 p.m. Rudy Castellano. Present. Mike Sweeney is excused. Mike Cousins. Present. Maria Gilberry. Here. Mike Martinez. Present. Travis Hearn. Here. There is a four. Alrighty then. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we uh, include the agenda as presented. I'll second that motion. You have a motion by Rudy and a second by Mike Martinez. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion to approve the minutes. Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion, but uh, I wasn't here, so um, if Mike would prefer to make that motion, let's see what's here. I'll make a motion to approve it. That's a good one. I second that. I'll take a motion. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to just say that um, for being that there was no items on the agenda, a lot was covered. So that's kind of nice. But, yeah. <laughs> Of information. Okay, yes. we have a motion by Mike Martinez and second by Rudy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> All right. Do we have any public input? Sorry. We, we do not. Um, I've noticed that the council chambers or that the clerk announced that from here forward at city council meetings, all public comment would be in person. So I, I I think we'll do we'll follow their lead. Uh, if you're okay with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, and from here phone. forward, any public comment will be in person. Okay. <clears throat> we'll move to business items. Number A, gas presentation. Okay, so I will be giving a presentation to the council tomorrow on our gas rates. So I think as most people have seen and heard cost of gas is going up uh, nationally, internationally. Uh, so Zia is our gas provider. And every year, at least once a year, they provide us an adjustment letter. Sometimes the rates go up, sometimes the rates go down. Um, Zia is required to um, charge based on how much they have to pay for gas. So they don't they don't have any markup on their cost of gas for that component. Each uh, Zia has three or four components when they bill us. One of that components is a gas cost. It doesn't have a markup on it. It's what they pay and they pass on to the city of Las Vegas. The city does the same thing with our customers. So whatever Zia charges us, it's a direct pass through that there's no markup on it. In July, because gas rates are going up so quickly, that um, oh, okay. because gas rates are going up so quickly, uh, sounded like there they are. Go. So I think we've passed both things that would require a decision by the board. Um, or since we're going to get ready to lose a committee member, Shawnee, what's the right thing to do here? Would it be to you can you can continue as a discussion but no action can be taken on any of the recommendation items or you can stop the meeting and wait till next time what do you think member what we got to do as Shani says <laughs> we'll just allow me to go ahead and leave and we'll go to items discussion and stuff and we'll hold on these items the next time 
That's what it is. The business items will be discussed and no decisions will be made. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you, Bill Mike. Mike. So uh, every, like I said, every year we get this. This year, because the gas cross was going up so quickly that uh, Zia had to send out a letter in July letting us know that um, what they were billing us for and what they were paying, they were paying a lot more than what they were billing us for. So they needed to raise rates. Um, we've been looking at it since July. And in October is the month we normally get a rate increase. And so I received another one in October. So I received one in July and one in October. Uh, the one in July was due to the, the big jump in the cost of gas and inflation and other things. Uh, the one in October was a, was a smaller component. But what um, what that means is I do have to pass this on to the residents of Las Vegas, but I want to inform them that this is a cost that is coming from Zia and from those who provide gas to Zia. So Zia gets theirs through a broker system. They get their gas cost through a broker system. They'll try and negotiate low prices. They'll try and find different certain times of the year. Just like when we fill up our propane tank, we try and buy it at the lowest cost during the year. Hopefully, it'll cover um, during during the winter time. Um, so the the amount that Zia bought at the price they they purchased it from, um, they've determined is not going to be enough to get through the winter. What they have to provide to the customers. Um, so. So uh, with, with what they are paying, that does have to be passed on to the city and then have to pass it up to the customers. And again, it's a cost that the city is not uh, uh, raising gas rates, the cost of gas rates. That's coming from the company that Zia buys their gas from, passed through Zia to the city. So I, I did want to cover any of the presentation. I will cover the city ordinance that does state I must raise rates in accordance with the changes in gas or lower. Sometimes the, the, the rates get reduced and we will reduce the cost of gas. Um, so in the code, in the municipal code is my guidance. It also tells me how to calculate it and tells me what I need to do. So I will be following the municipal code. Um, the city's bill is made up of three components. So there's the monthly service charge and that is not changing. And the monthly service charge is where we pay our, our there's a flat fee that we have to pay Zia uh, every month. Um, that comes out of the service charge plus anything that we might have to do to maintain the system. Think about that. That's the ten dollar base rate that everybody pays, whether you use gas or not. Uh, then there's the cost of service, which is the operations and maintenance. That is adjusted by CPI. In the last twelve months, uh, CPI is um, the consumer price index, so that's a reflection of inflation. In the last twelve months, we've seen an eight point three percent increase in inflation or increase in the CPI. Uh, adjustment for this year, CPI, which is equivalent to inflation. Everything costs about 8.3% more. Uh, so because of that, the cost of service will be adjusted 8.3% to stay on. And again, it's per our, our city ordinance. So it's per city ordinance. Now, we, you know, there, there have been times, actually, over the last couple of years, we've tried to not pass that one through. But because everything is going up in costs, we're going to have to pass that one through. Um, Last year, we didn't pass it through. The previous few years ago, we passed only a portion of it through. So by doing that, our cost of materials go up, cost of labor goes up, cost of maintenance goes up, but the amount of money that we're taking in is, wasn't going up. Uh, so we will be adjusting for uh, CPI. The biggest component, but that's a, that's a small component, that's 8.3%. Um, the big component of the, the gas rate increase is the actual cost of gas. Uh, so. The, the amount, the cost of an actual MCF, which is a thousand cubic feet of gas, um, increased by 66.8% this year. So natural gas, just the cost of gas, went from four dollars and thirty cents to seven dollars and sixty-seven cents per MCF. That's a 66.8% increase. Um, so as part of my presentation, uh, there will be I'll have a historical chart that shows um, how the cost of service has changed and how the cost of gas has changed in 19. In 2019, it was 351. 2020, it was 307. In 2021, it went up to 350. Uh, in 2022, it was at 458. And this year, um, it'll go up to $8.14 uh, for the cost of gas. And again, that's per our ordinance. Um, and I've also documented the uh, price index. Uh, so the, the reason there's a difference between the 767 for the gas and 814 because it's what's called unaccounted for gas. 
um, the amount that we buy from Zia and then the amount that we sell to our customers, there's a there's a amount in there that's different. That difference is called unaccounted for gas. It can be done, it can be due to gas leaks on the city side, it can be due to a gas line that's been hit. Um, whatever reason why the volume that came in and the volume went out are different, that cost again per city ordinance is passed on to the customers and shared by all the customers in the city. So that's how, and that's, that is calculated in accordance with the ordinance. So Zia's rates. Zia has four components. One is cost, the cost of gas. Uh, two is transportation. Three is reconciliation. And four is transmission. So the cost of gas um, was, let me see, cost of gas for Zia was $3. And it, it went up $2.94.86. And, $2 and so last year it was three dollars and two cents per MCF. This year it will be five point nine six nine eight per MCF. So again, that's the sixty six point eight percent increase. So that's the cost of gas. Transportation um, went up by point zero five cents, um, or actually five point seven seven cents, um, and that is what is paid to uh, the various transmission line companies between the source of our gas and Zia when they just when they provide it to us. The city's transmission line starts in Colmar. So everything up to Colmar belongs to someone else. And so whatever it costs Zia to get it to that point, the city pays that cost. Uh, reconciliation. So they the I've I've been talking with Zia gas. The way that they calculate uh, or estimate how much gas they're going to use is they figure out the last few years based on weather, how much they think they're going to use, and they pre-purchase. They'll estimate what they're using for a 12-month period or over a period of time, and they'll pre-purchase it. If they purchase too much, they're stuck with it. They have to pay for it. Once they've committed to it, it's it's like those, it's like the stock market. It's a commodity. Mm -hmm. They have to pay for it. And so they try and find that balance with purchasing enough that they have for the customers and that if it's short of what they need when they need natural gas they're gonna have to go out on the on the spot market and buy it so if they purchased it at four dollars and then uh, it only covered 90 percent of the year when it comes to the last, last 10 percent they've got to go buy it for whatever the price is at that time they don't have that ability to to adjust for it so the difference between what they're charging the customer and that spot price has to be collected at some point it's called reconciliation it gets added into the following year Sometimes it's a reduction, sometimes it's an addition. So it's based on, you know, they, tr they try and do their best um, accounting to, to come up with a, a price that's going to be pretty close. Uh, the last few years have had some unusual unusual things happening with the cold spell in February of 2021. Uh, ripples through the natural gas community. Um, the Our challenges overseas with uh, our provider, is Russia is one of the biggest providers of natural gas. So that can also cause changes in, in the cost of gas, natural gas. Um, the part that a lot of people want to ask is, is any of this money that's going into the pocket of Zia? Basically, are these profits? There is what's called the transmission, uh, not transportation, but transmission cost. That is where they have all their operations, maintenance, and profits. That amount has not changed since April of 2019. That amount has to be approved by PRC. And that amount is, again, where they would get the profits from or where they would get the money for their employees or where they would get their money uh, for operations and maintenance. That, uh, again, has not changed since April of 2019, that amount. And if they were to change it, they would have to take it to PRC and request PRC to approve a rate increase for that component. The other components are they increase and they decrease as the costs apply to Zia. And so Z is allowed to pass those straight through. PRC says you're allowed to pass those costs straight through. You're not allowed to make any money off of it, but we don't want you to lose money either. So they understand if they get charged for it, um, they're going to pass those costs. Comparables. Uh, I looked at uh, Colorado, Bailey, Cripple Creek, Pueblo, and Eastern Colorado, and looked at Hobbs, Deming, um, and compared them to Las Vegas. So just the cost of gas. Um, City of Las Vegas will be $7.67 just for the cost of gas from Zia. Bailey, Colorado is $9.71. Cripple Creek is $11.28. Pueblo is $10.40. Eastern Colorado is $8.05. And 
Hobbs is over eleven dollars and Debbie is over eleven dollars. So even though the city of Las Vegas went up, we are still uh, below. We are still being charged less than some of the other communities. Um, some of the reason why the other communities, especially Hobbs and Deming, are impacted is in February of 2021 when they had the huge coal snap and there was a huge demand for natural gas, they didn't have the supply they needed. So that's when they had gone on the spot market to buy natural gas. And because um, of huge demand and limited supply, the cost of natural gas to these gas companies went from mid $2 to five dollars to ten dollars to three hundred dollars to a thousand dollars for an mco so ultimately it went from two dollars to a thousand dollars for a short period of time um, at that point they had to buy what they needed to buy so they had to pay those prices uh, that did not affect the city of las vegas city of las vegas was not one of the communities that was impacted by that but some other communities in the southern part of new mexico and in texas will be having to pay back those costs those loans uh, over a period of time that does not, again, does not affect the city of Las Vegas, but it's an interesting point to make that uh, why, why there would be the other communities that have even much higher gas prices in the city. Um, we, ours is mainly because the cost of natural gas itself is going up. For other communities, it's the cost of natural gas plus paying back the, the, the loan for that, um, that coal stack. So what this means for the average customer, most customers in the summer months use maybe one or two MCS. And in the winter months, they're going to use 10 to 15 MCFs. So the average for a month is six MCFs. We tend to use that one. That way it keeps it simple when we're calculating. So a customer who paid $59.74 last year for six MCFs, it will cost $81.76 for the same amount this year. So you're looking at uh, 20, a little over $21 increase. That's the average. Uh, so during the summertime, you go from $26.58 to $33.92. If you use two MCFs and the winter months, uh, you might go from 92.90 to 129.60 in the winter months. So, uh, and there are some extreme here. I do go ahead and look at the 15 MCFs, which would be uh, using a lot of natural gas. That would go from 124.35 last year to 189.40 this year. So the you know things people can do are turn the turn your uh, thermostat down a little bit. Uh, keep, keep the temperature just a few degrees cooler than, than you would previously. Blankets, sweatshirts, whatever it is that can help people to keep the, <laughs> highest, the, the gas use, especially during the winter time that, that have the, the highest increase. So uh, just a reminder, due to the increase in the cost of natural gas and the consumer price index, customers will see an increase beginning with their bills. And we're going to implement it starting January 2023. So just a reminder, gas is a pass-through cost. Propane is no different. Propane is no different. I mean, people try and buy it as early as they can, so they, they have that price. But come this winter time, it's a lot of things are going to be um, higher in cost. So I, I think the, the, the major point that we want to make sure we're clear is this is not a rate increase by the city. It's a pass-through cost that's, that's being put on the city that we have to pass on to the customers. Yeah. Um, we still have light heat. There's still uh, um, ways of getting some help. So if any customers are low income and they need help, please reach out to and talk to customer service. Customer service will point you in the direction of light heat uh, and try to help them. Um, and we may even need to help our neighbors uh, during this during this whole time. I do all the propane stuff. Yeah, so Zia actually sent me the, the numbers. Uh, Hal, Hobbs, sorry, Hobbs, Jell, and Lincoln County, 1182. Donna Anna, Donna Anna County, 1181.8. And the Maxwell system, $8.90. So. Okay, that is the guest presentation I'll be giving tomorrow. I'll, I'll have it in, in the very well done, Maria. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. Do we need to go through all these recommendations? Or I don't think we can do recommendations, but I can do an information um, for discussion. 
Um, the city water wastewater treatment plant is in need of purchasing a camel truck, so we did get a quote for one six hundred thirteen thousand one hundred sixty six dollars. We do have the funds budgeted, and we will be taking an older camel that is no longer uh, um, working for us. We're going to trade it in. We've tried auctioning them off, and the time involved in auctioning it is never doesn't ever really produce a decent amount of money. So being able to trade it in will help us. Uh, this does have a uh, a warranty, I believe it's a, a one year warranty. And like many things, it is 225 days for delivery. Um, uh, the need for the wastewater plant, maybe have a funding for it. Uh, number, number two, we have the supervisory control and data acquisition project. We've gone through planning and design. When we took this out to bid, we were estimating about a half million to 800,000 for the project. The project came in at 1.7 million. Uh, we went back out to NMFA and asked for help and they took it to their board and they were able to approve the city to go from a half a million in funding to 2 million in, in funding. So it, and it is uh, subsidized. And we are definitely in need of this project. Um, the, we're making some minor changes to the final set of plans and we'll be ready to go uh, in conjunction with the approval of this, this one. We'll take it back out to bid uh, probably early February, March of 2023, as soon as we secure the funding to the point that they'll let us bid out. And that is uh, that allows us to monitor our washroom implants more efficiently, be able to track chemical usage, flows, and, and spot anything that might be something we need to address uh, quickly. And that would be address to everybody's phone that's responsible for that. Anybody who is the, the right, who has the need to know, will we'll have access to that. Uh, next one is the next. Four, I believe, are actually addendums. One, two, three, four, five. So every, all of our contracts, again, are four-year contracts. We've been we've uh, presented this before, but every year we come back and take a chance to review that, and make sure that we want to continue with that that engineer or that contractor or that provider. So the first one we're looking at is for Bohan and Houston. They were awarded uh, some water treatment plants, planning, designing, construction RFP uh, back in 2021. Uh, and we are, but we have been working with them. They're working on the skater project and some other projects. And so we do want to continue with Bohan and Houston on our water treatment plant projects. The next one is for Bowles and Corbin. Uh, they were also awarded the water treatment plant uh, facility planning and design RFP. And same thing, they're doing a lot of work for us, um, working on some. Reuse of water at the water treatment plants, as well as sediment removal projects and uh, emergency water use projects. So we want to continue with Mold and Corbin. Um, this will be addendum number one for both Bohan and Houston and Mold and Corbin. The next one is for AECOM. AECOM has been the engineer that has been working with the city on our dams and reservoirs for several years. They're the ones that completed the Bradford project. And we're currently working on the Peterson project. So the, well, we do want to continue with this uh, this engineer. So this is a den of number one to continue and extend the agreement for another year. For, so year two of a four year contract. Uh, the third one is, or the fourth one is Sonder Miller. Uh, they were awarded for water distribution. And so we're going to go ahead and extend their contract for another year. So we can continue to make use of Sonder Miller as needed. And then HDR, actually Moles and Corbin was, right, I think Moles and Corbin should be able to distribution. I'll take a look at that and make sure that we have the right, so, the right ones there. Uh, and then HDR was uh, one treatment plant facility planning. Uh, and so they're going to continue with the water chain. But I think that holds a quarter one day distribution. I know they're working with Travis on PRVs. 
So all of those engineers we want to continue to work with. We had corrected it. They called them in 2022 and we've corrected them. Uh, monthly reports. So I don't have a lot to report because we're in the middle, middle of a lot of things going on right now. Um, water distribution has a few water lines. They had a, a leak today, but they have a few water lines that they've been working on. Um, gas has a gas line repair they're going to, or replacement they're going to work on starting next year. Solid waste. Uh, they have their maintenance shop and their drain, grading and drainage project they're, they're continuing to work on. And the water treatment plant has numerous projects they're working on to improve the water treatment plant facility. So, Travis, do you have anything particular you want to talk about that the distribution crew is working on? Um, we're just waiting for this uh, PRV project to get, get started. It's going to be a big, big project. Did you guys find the, the uh, loop? Should we, you know, that we're still looking for that. And, and how's the you know, filter plant on the lake? He said it. So current, currently it's offline, but we have, we're full on, we're at 95% full on all of our reservoirs. Does that put a number to days of water or something? So that, that's, that's kind of challenging. As you know, we're, we're actually taking water off the river. So even though we have a certain number of days in, in the reservoirs, because we're being supplemented off the river, it's day for day. So it's kind of um, not quite, if I was to say exactly how many days, it doesn't count what's in the river. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why we were using days earlier is because we weren't able to take off the river and it was critical to show that countdown. Right now we are at, um, right, so we're about 95% full and normally this time of year we're between 40 and 50% full. So we have twice as much water and storage at this year, this time, than we had last year. This time. Mm -hmm. right. In comparison, how much water do we have off of the river? compared to usage so we can we can take more off the river right now than we're using every day right we're right now what our limited by is full reservoirs how's the water quality in the river right now it's good it's it's below 20 so we're able to take it it's those it's those storms that stir it up when we have to come off mm -hmm. on the river. okay that's answered my question and the uh, the water in the store is kind of murky it is story is always kind of murky right now. It's about 30 NTUs. So it's something we're we're trying to work with. Oh, it's the shale, it's the wind, and it's it's something about story has always been a little murky. more murky than Bradner or Peterson. I usually come down to the shale as well. And so we're all turnover and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we've had that. I think we've already had the Peterson turnover. Projects, I think the major projects, um, the ones that are associated with uh, post fire, the water treatment plant, the effluent treatment plant, the permanent sediment removal in the canyon, permanent sediment removal at Story, uh, the improvements for the uh, sed basin up in uh, the canyon, emergency uh, removal, or emergency water availability at the skating pond, uh, sediment removal above the Gabions. Um, all of those projects have been submitted one through anyone that was eligible was submitted through FEMA. In addition, we're seeking funding from uh, NMFA, DHSEM through hazard, hazard mitigation, uh, the, the FEMA route, and pretty much and clean water SRF. So we're, we're reaching out to multiple funding um, entities to see which one is the, the most rapid one we get the funding we need, all while still presenting it to FEMA or for FEMA to fully cover all of these. That's going to be good. We don't want to wait for anything, so we're not, we're not, you know, we're, we're moving forward and, and, and pushing these projects. And they still are, because of the size of the projects and the complexity of the projects, these will still take two and a half to, to five years for most of these projects because of the, there's a year just for delivery of parts. Every single one of these projects has at least a 12 month of materials. It does make it challenging, but uh, uh, even a couple of the projects were ready to bid out 
we're pretty sure that once we get it, we won't be able to delete the screen. That's what this the supply chain right now. Just one second. Travis, we'll talk more about the supply chain. I'm sure he's been greatly impacted by that. Okay. Hurry up and wait. Well, it's the stress behind it. If you got a bus of six inch maybe you got a dress as well. Yeah, we still got to decide about it. We try to keep an inventory, but they take it faster than the day stuff. So we have to be careful with that. So I, on a project I should talk about is you know hot springs. I know for the most of the public is asked, you know, what, on where this project is at and why is it the time for this particular project. So we're replacing the sewer line from approximately Bernalillo, excuse me, Bernalillo Street to Mills, to get to Mills. And then the water line from the PRV at San Miguel to Mills. No, it's from Elm Street to Mills. So we're replacing both of those utilities. When this project was awarded, as uh, soon as the contractor started to purchase the water, purchase the water line, the provider of it said that the water line was no longer available. So they had to go spec out a new water line. It had to run it through the state construction programs bureau for approval. Had to run it through our city's engineer for approval. And then once that was, then they were allowed to, uh, and then there was a price change. Because it was different materials or different costs. Uh, at that point, then we had to, um, then they ordered it and it was taking months for them to get the parts. Uh, and the water line is on one side of the road and the sewer line is on the other. So um, we couldn't really do both at the same time. So they went ahead and started on the sewer line, they're continuing the sewer line. I think they're pretty close to finishing the sewer line, but that is a 13 foot deep excavation. And so one, it's a safety issue. They have to put a lot of safety uh, items in to the to the excavation, uh, which slows the, the progress down for how much they can do in, in a day. And then there's at least five manholes, I think, that they changed out, so that they replaced. So that project in and of itself was already a multi, multi-month project. By the time we ordered the materials, got the materials delivered, had the delay on the water side. Um, and then the rains, when the rains came and some of those excavations were open, um, they had to wait till the excavations dried out. So they had to pump everything out, remove any wet soil on wet material, and it has to be replaced with dry material. And then we kept having the rains, so that kind of slowed down as well. So there's been a few delays on that project. But uh, they're and those bad. one of the challenges, but uh, we will get that project completed and we'll go on to the next project. So I can I can estimate early 2023 when that project the water line and the sewer line will be complete. I'm that estimate. Announcements. I don't really have any announcements. Uh, I know that there's a schedule for the parade. I don't have that information. On. I think we're gonna try and do everything. Uh, Santa in the park and the parade and day on one one day. We'll be up on Saturdays. Okay. Oh, uh, I know. Solid waste schedules are out for trash pickup. Trash pickup around Thanksgiving is going to be, we're going to try to pick everybody up on Monday and Tuesday. So Monday and Tuesday routes are on Monday. Wednesdays and Thursdays routes are on Tuesday. That's going to be in the Optic. It's on the city's website. It's on Facebook. Um, so anybody on for, for Thanksgiving, Anybody who has the trash picked up normally on Monday and Tuesday, put it out Monday morning before 7. And anybody who gets the trash picked up Wednesday and Thursday, it needs to be out Tuesday morning before 7. Tuesday morning, uh, that same week? Um, the, the same week. So the <coughs> week of Thanksgiving, we'll be picking up trash on Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday will be the uh, kind of picking up stragglers. But everybody needs to have the trash cans out on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, what date is that on Monday? Twenty first. Yes. So Monday the 21st will be Mondays and Tuesdays routes. 
Tuesday the 22nd will be Wednesdays and Thursdays routes. Uh, Wednesday will be any stragglers and special needs. They'll be closed on Thursday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But the commercial routes still run. The, our commercial um, trash hacker driver, I don't know what day he takes off because they have commercial routes every day. So we put that out for Thanksgiving and then Christmas and New Year's is scheduled to Oslo. Okay, thank you. All right, announcements. Is that it? Yes. Any member comments, Mike? No, Then let us adjourn the meeting at 2 5. Thank you, Travis and Maria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.